Welcome back to, of course, uh, the breakfast. And uh, our focus now is going to be on the International Day of uh, the Rural Women. And, uh, of course, we're going to be having a quick conversation about it. Yes, indeed. Uh, this year's um, on International uh, Day of Rural Women, the spotlight is on the urgent need for building rural women's resilience in the wake of COVID-19 for building back better by strengthening rural women's sustainable livelihoods and well-being. Rural women play a crucial role in agriculture, food security and nutrition, land and natural resource management, and rural enterprises. They have been at the front lines of responding to the pandemic, even as their unpaid care and domestic work increased under lockdowns. Mobility is restricted, supply chains are disrupted, and climate and conflict crises compound COVID-19 um, impacts. And uh, joining us to have a quick conversation about this is uh, Ifi Onyegulem. Thank you so much for uh, stepping in and for joining us. Ifi, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Brilliant. Thank All you right. very much for joining us. Uh, could, you, could you talk to us about uh, the effect of this uh, pandemic, so to speak, uh, it has had on rural women? and uh, the relevance of the theme of resilience. All right, when you talk about um, the effect of the coronavirus on rural women, there is a long list. You find out that these are women who were not even having things easy as it is before the pandemic hit. Even women who live in the urban areas they were facing a lot of problems, not to talk of the women in the rural areas. So when you look at the women who live in the rural areas, you're talking about falling deep down into abject poverty. Some of them have no water. Remember they say, wash your hands, don't touch your face, don't touch your nose, don't touch your mouth. Where will they get the water to wash their hands? They can't even get water to cook. They can't get good water to drink, not to talk of water to wash their hands. Now you talk of electricity. Not many of them have electricity. You talk of um, medicine, getting medical care. It's not easy for the women in those areas. Now, when you talk about women also in the rural areas, we should not forget women living with disabilities. These are women who find it very difficult to do the other things that people are doing. So I would say that the pandemic had a very devastating effect on women in the rural areas. All oh. right. Um, I'm going to also quickly talk about um, um, the issues of insecurity in the north, you know, which has been of great disadvantage to uh, rural women and, of course, women um, uh, farmers. Uh, quickly share, you know, how bad it has been lately and what, what ways you would have loved the government to intervene. Now, women in the rural areas in the north, if we put it that way, <clears throat> it, it's not um, easy for them, one, because of the area where they live, some of them the religion and what it is that the society has actually put on them. I'll share with you years ago, when I worked with one of the media houses in Lagos, I was opportune to be in the north during the elections. You found out right there, women are just, they're just being in the background. They're not heard, they're not seen, and they do what it is that they're told. Now, the pandemic actually hit them, because I spoke to a couple of women who run NGOs in the north. And they said to me that it was so devastating that many women now get out to go beg for food to eat. Let's take just for instance, where you have some IDP camps. One of the ladies managing uh, an NGO there said to me that women and girls step out to even look for men to have sex with them. Pardon me to use this, say the words right here on television. They had to go that way. 
just so that they could find food to eat. If, you, if, I, may, if, I, may, if I may interject, uh, during yes. the course of the lockdown, there was a lot of announcement about palliatives uh, being distributed and given uh, to, um, I mean, people in remote areas. Uh, could you How talk to us about... How many people got the palliatives? The questions are all over the place. Only some persons got the palliatives, which is what I've always said. We need to have accurate data so that people go somewhere, like you have in civilized climbs, where you have people kill and get to pick up these um, food, uh, uh, what's it called now, palliatives as it is. So when we talk about people getting palliatives, not all the best, all the people got, especially those women in the north. Yes, we saw people were taking pictures, people were collecting money, people were getting um, small, small packs of food. But the question is how many of them got it? Indeed. Um, uh, Frank, you were sharing something about, you know, stoopings as low as having to have, um, well, give sexual favors for um, financial assistance in the North. And it's, a, it's a not a very, very interesting picture. Um, I, I, I want you to share a little bit on loans. I believe that there might have been some loans given to uh, female farmers in, you know, in Northern Nigeria and, of course, also across the whole country. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, can't hear, I can't hear you. Right. Um, I'm asking about loans now. Were there any mm. loans given to um, women farmers across the country? Did they also get any waivers uh, from these loans that were given to assist them in, in the farming business and uh, their families also? I can only speak for um, what it is that some NGOs actually did. And I know that there were some NGOs that stepped out of their ways to help women you know, women farmers and women who were doing other small businesses. But for loans from the government, it's not something I want to speak about because I'm not privy to that. But if I talk about NGOs that did go out of their way to see that these women get the kind of support that they need during the pandemic, yes, some, some stepped out and they helped women. All right, let's, let's look at uh, some of the ways we can actually move forward. I know this is uh, we're beginning to sound like broken records. Um, um, Non-governmental organizations uh, are coming out to assist these women, but it doesn't seem to be enough. In what more ways do you think these women can be assisted from your uh, point of view? Yes, NGOs have tried their best, but you find also that the funds are drying up. Um, anyone who looks around the world now will understand that COVID-19 came and changed the whole world. In the news now, we hear that some countries are actually shutting down again because of the second and third wave in some other countries. So for people who even wait for AIDS and, you know, uh, donor cash to come, those things are drying up. So for the NGOs, they're actually overstretching themselves, which is why I put it at the doorstep of the government. That's the federal government. They need to look at how they can get to touch the lives of women. And when I talk about touching the lives of women, I'm not talking about what we talk, when we hear trader money, 10,000 Naira, you're giving to women. What in the world is 10,000 Naira going to do for you? That is something you just used to recharge your phone. So government needs to think about ways that they can truly help to sustain what it is that women are doing. You need to think about a conducive environment. There has to be uninterrupted power supply. There has to be ways that women can get to access funds. And they need to find a way to make these things sustainable. So when we talk about empowerment that Nigerians do, we need to understand that those things are just what you do. They're just a flash in the pan. We need to think about things that will be sustainable. So that when you say you are lifting 100 million Nigerians, of course, including women, out of poverty, we want to believe you when you say such things. If we only able to, thank you so much for stopping by and for speaking with us. It's a conversation that I believe, you know, needs to continue um, until we see a change and to see a better society for women. So thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you and have a great day.
You too, you too. Um, I don't even know where to begin uh, because when you see some of these women, when you travel and you see some of these women and how hard they, they work. work, one would say if hard work is how we actually uh, succeed alone in life, then um, a lot of persons wouldn't be in the situation that they are in. And then when, when you also, it brings to mind some of the uh, quarrels that um, some of these protesters with NSARS are saying. Uh, Aisha Yusuf mentioned something about, you know, it, it, she wants to see a Nigeria where you don't have to be in a privileged position to succeed or know somebody yes. to succeed um, in life. And that applies for me uh, to rural women. So aside from what non-governmental organization is doing, and the government is saying that they are trying to move towards agriculture and encouraging women more, so much more needs to be needs done. To I'm, be done I'm always, always, uh, to reach always, out to and these always women. going to be speaking about how much more we need to do and improve on to make our society better for women. Um, breaks my heart every time I hear stories like this um, yeah, of women having to give sexual favors for, for and and. And I when you talk about sexual favors, really what <laughs> access do they have to good health care? Yeah, the barely, community yeah. cent the um, health centers in uh, local communities are almost non-existent. And even when you do see them, I remember a time when I was um, in, we, we, we do this uh, rural community programs. I went to an interior, com they had a massive, beautifully um, 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 built uh, facility, not a single staff. To run things, really you know, so it's imperative that um, more be done for rural women. All right. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.